My name is Jerry Bond, and I represent Being In Ministry, a worldwide TV ministry that is going to bless you today. May the glory and the presence of God our Father through Jesus His Son by the Spirit that envelops and holds and is in us go all over this world. And may the people see and know that God is alive, that He is dealing with His people. He's bringing salvation. Thank you for listening to the messages. And we, we just praise the Lord that you have believed and received. You know, the Bible says in Romans 10, verse 8, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord and repents of their sins, that he is just and merciful to forgive you, that Jesus was beaten, he hung on the cross, he was buried, and on the third day he came out of that tomb, and he gave mankind re redemption and right re rest restoration back to the Father. We thank him right now that he's blessed you and restored you. I pray that you prayed that, that prayer of faith. If you did, call us on that number there on the bottom of the screen or email us or write us, whatever you'd like. We will, we will be glad to hear from you. May, your, may you send your tithes and offerings to help us get, get this message out throughout the world. We hope you're having a blessed and a prosperous day in Jesus Christ. Amen. All those people hold hands, and I said, I'm going to tell you, some of you may not know the Lord. Some of you may think I fell out of a tree, but let me tell you something. When you hold hands and join yourself to each other, there's never going to be a moment in your life that you don't know Jesus is Lord. You're going to come through that grace and that mercy and receive him as your Lord and your Savior. And I mean the Lord blessed it. There wasn't a dry eye in the bunch. I'm telling you, God took care of business. He took care of business. And he's taking care of business now. So we look around at all the things that are going on in the world and we have programmed ourselves to listen to the trash. Why don't we program ourselves to get full of Jesus and full of the Holy Spirit where we can see through what the enemy is doing. Who's put a curse on our president, upon our Congress, upon our money, upon our... We are God's nation, chose to take the gospel to the ends of the earth to tell people about Jesus. When are we going to wake up, stand up, and start calling those things that be not as though they are? We need to call in a righteous man. We need to call in that this president would get saved. We need to call in that he'd get full of the Holy Ghost and full of the Word of God. We need to call Call in for the leaders of this world to turn from what they're doing. We need to call in for the people to re repent and turn from their sin and walk in the mercy and the grace and the goodness that God set before them. He wants and He desires them. He is not condemning them. And so I was asking the Lord, I said, Lord, how can I preach this message? What is the word for today? And he says, go to Romans 8, 1. It says, there is no condemnation. Some of you have been eyeball deep in sin, and you've been in the pit, and you've been hurting, and you've been dying, and you've been sick in your body, and you've been all these things, and your children are sick. And you're saying, what can I do? He said, there's no condemnation. I love you unconditionally. There is nothing. There is no There is no. There is no blockage between me and them. The blood washed that sin away, washed that, through that cross, washed all that away. There is nothing between me and man any longer. There was a stench between us. There was sin. But my son hung on that cross and washed the people and cleansed the people from all their sin, from all unrighteousness, whether they receive it or believe it or don't believe it or receive it. It is there. No matter what is put out on the news, no matter what you hear, my, my righteousness, my son, cleared that way that every person on the face of the earth has been brought into my glory and can walk in my glory. All they have to do is say Jesus and they've automatically entered into the kingdom because he came preaching that the kingdom was at hand. He came and said, the kingdom is now, not when you pass away. The great righteousness is when you enter into that kingdom, when you've been made right and washed by that blood and cleansed by that blood and made holy. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now I've sat under, I went 12, 12 hours a day for preaching for three days. Okay? That's nothing compared to what the Lord does to me. He, he preaches to me 24-7. He wakes me up in the middle of the night and says, Jerry, it's time to get up. I woke up at 4 o'clock this morning. I mean, I even watched me on TV and I started bawling watching me on TV. There's such an anointing on what the Lord's doing that it'll just bust your whole being open to the things of the Lord. And so everywhere you look, you're seeing the Lord do stuff. You're seeing His presence. And you're waiting for the opportunity. I heard one of the speakers, a famous man, and I heard him get up there and he said, Now you all, now see this is some more of those roadblocks. Satan will always use somebody or something to put a road. He said, Now, <clears throat> Well, he says, before you go out and pray for someone, you need to pray and ask the Lord to give you the vision of it. <laughs> How big is your God? 
How big is God? Are you going to think big? Are you going to think on a 39 cent lunch and a bucket that has a hole in it? Are you going to think about what the world is telling you that in, in the times of trouble? I had a man call me yesterday. He said, what do you think about the blood moons and all the things happen? I says, God's going to get the glory whatever happens. It doesn't make any difference what happens. It doesn't make about the blood moons. It doesn't make any difference about all the sin, all the junk, or what the political people is, or the armies in the land killing one another. It doesn't make any difference. God is going to get the glory. And in that, in Psalm 91, we are kept safe. Those that believe and trust in the Lord, the blood of Jesus, Revelation 12, 11, says we are bought and paid for it. We're under that blood. We're protected. And nothing and nothing can take us out of his hand. Roman, uh, John 10, 28. Nothing can snatch you out of his hand. Neither death, nor life, nor cancer, nor anything can snatch He's there. So it doesn't matter about all that stuff. Now look back to this guy that's saying this. Now in maybe in his life, maybe that was true in his life. But in my life, the Lord puts me just like a while ago when that little boy walked by. The, the, his arm was all and a little Hispanic boy. and He walked by and I, I kept waiting. The Lord says, don't you leave. He's gone in the bathroom. When he comes back, I want you to put your hands on that boy and call him well. I want you to speak to that kid. Now, the, I just asked his mom, can I pray for him? I got permission. And I did what the Spirit of God told me to do. I didn't go up there to do that. I didn't know that I was that the young man was going to come in my pathway today. I just asked the Lord, take me and use me however you want to. So I am a yielded vessel to whatever he wants to do. So it may not work for you, but it will work if you don't put a roadblock up. I was standing in, in the Sheridan parking lot. And there was a young uh, Muslim guy named Mohammed. He was standing there. And, and I had tipped him for, for doing some, some little old something. And I'm standing there talking to him. And I've got a handful of CDs. And I said, you're Muslim, aren't you? And he said, yeah, I am. I said, let me tell you a story. So I told him about praying for the wind to blow, to turn the windmill, to pump the water. And I said, one day it dawned on me that God would have given me a tank of water instead of the wind to blow. And he thought, hmm, yeah. So a little bit, I said, you know, my wife died in 1994, and I laid hands on her, and she came back to life. Really? I said, yeah. God did the stuff. I said, he's still doing the stuff. He said, give me some CDs. So I gave him CDs. Now, I didn't try to go and change the young man from being a Muslim. I just tried to tell him about my Jesus. I didn't try to change where he was or what he was or who he was or what church he went to. I didn't do it. That's not my business. The Holy Spirit does that. My job is to love the guy. That's all I'm supposed to do. Tell him about Jesus and love him. Unconditionally. How about, a, how about a person that's in sin? A homosexual or gay marriage or an adulterer or a liar or a thief. We're supposed to love them unconditionally. Jesus gave us two commands. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy me. Thou shalt love each other. Each other. Unconditionally. God loves us unconditionally. But oh, we've got to put us a roadblock in there. We got to say, well, if that person cleans up or if that person changes their lifestyle. No, the Holy Spirit does that. It's not your job to clean your husband up or your wife up. The Holy Spirit does that. Tend to your own doggone rat killing. Walk in your own shoes first before you start judging somebody else. Judge not lest you be judged. Hey, y'all, are you listening? Amen. So I was listening to all this stuff, and I was listening to this man tell it, and he's a great man of God. He, he walks with God, and, and a lot of miracles follow this man. But that's his life. Now, my life is the Lord says, you're my vessel. I'm going to put you where you are. Now, don't you do anything stupid that will bring some kind of... A, a problem upon my ministry not Jerry Bond but God's ministry this is God's ministry God is going to put us on TV all across this land he's going to bring a great awakening is coming I'm going to call these things out into the open where everybody can see it my hands are clean sure I made mistakes in my lifetime but I'm covered by the blood and I'm washed and I'm forgiven how about you are you washed and forgiven today are you I know Paco is he's a child of God look at him look at the smile on his face I know that God loves every person in spite of who they are, in spite of what they've done, in spite of what old nag they wrote up here on. It doesn't make any difference who you are. It makes a difference how, what your faith is. Everybody wants to say, well, if my people humble themselves and pray, who is that? That is me. If I'm willing to humble myself and ask the Lord, He said, I will. If I'm willing to make myself available, He says, I will. He says, I ask you to go to the ends of the earth, to Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth, and be my what? Witnesses of what? The gospel. What is the gospel? Jesus. What is the gospel? Jesus. What did Jesus do? He healed the sick, the blind saw, the, the deaf heard, the, the lepers were cleansed. And the good news, what is the good news? That we're forgiven. The good news is we're forgiven. 
those folks that are having a hard time right now and $18 trillion in debt, our, our, our debt is forgiven. It's forgiven. It's washed. It's cleansed. And I said, Lord, I, I hear all these people, every, every one of them got up there. The big deal was all these, all these pastors or preachers or evangelists, whatever they are on TV, they're all asking for a, a $60 million or $50 million jet aircraft. And people get up, well, they just get a knot. I had a guy take me to dinner last night, and he got a knot in his underwear about a man asking for a $60 million air. What happened if he had asked for a, a billion dollar airplane? Our president flies, flies a, pre, a plane, costs four or five hundred million dollars. We don't think anything about that, do we? Or cost 200000 to fly that puppy from one end of this nation to the other every day that he goes somewhere. We don't think a thing about that. What difference does it make when this man's working for God? If somebody gets saved, somebody gets healed, somebody gets delivered, the kingdom is being preached, what difference, what method of transportation he uses to get there? And who's going to pay for it? If you don't give, you're not part of it, so why are you griping and belly aching and frustrated because of what somebody else did? It's not in my business, it's not in your business. If you want to stop that nonsense, you start praying for that man that his eyes would be open. Is he a good steward of God's money? Is he doing what God's called him to do? Now, I can justify anything you want to ride up to. I can, I can show you scriptures to fit anything you want to do. I don't care what it is. There's one in there where Judas Iscariot says he hung himself. Now, it says right behind it says, go and do likewise. Are you going to be that silly and naive to do the same? You know, you got to get up. you got to ride up. you got to stand up. you got to start reading God's Word. You can't get it by osmosis. It won't work on the, on the library table. You've got to get it in your heart. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. When you start speaking it, God says, I will do these things. When does he do it? When you say Jesus. When does the miracle happen? When you say Jesus. Well, it didn't manifest for our. It manifested when you said Jesus. Your brother was healed of cancer when you said Jesus. All things are possible for them that believe. Who's that? That's us. So when you get to listening to all the worldly things, well, they're saying everybody's all been out of shape and all the churches are, are talking about, well, our hell is our nation's under judgment. Wrong. Absolutely false. Now, if you want to go back under the old covenant, help yourself. Get under the old covenant. Under the old covenant, they were under judgment. And God judged the nations and they were destroyed. He allowed Satan to destroy them or other nations. You can read it. Come under the new covenant, grace, mercy. Through one man's obedience, Jesus is obedient. All were forgiven. All. We're not under judgment anymore. Jesus said in John 16, he says, It is expedient that I go to the Father because sin, righteousness, and judgment, because sin, Satan, who is the ruler of this world, is already judged. He didn't say you and me or the nations. He said the ruler. Satan is already judged. Who's causing all the hell and the mayhem? Satan. Satan is causing that. Not Jesus and not the Father. Go read James 1, 1, 15 through 20. It says every good and perfect gift comes from our Father who is there's no shifting shadow. Who, every good and perfect gift comes from Him. Why would you say your Father and the devil are brothers or kinfolks or, or even put them in the same sentence? Why would you do that? Or the unrighteous judge? Why would you connect our Father God who is righteous, good, and holy? Why would you do that? Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow death, I will fear no evil. I have no fear about anything. Whatever they kill the body, you're with the Lord. Whatever you live, you're with the Lord. You belong to the Lord. You're bought with a price. Why are you sweating all this dumb stuff? Why? Fear? Or does it sound good? Say, our nation is under judgment. Wrong. You're going to hear preachers preaching it, but they're mistakenly wrong. I'm sorry. We pray that their eyes be open to the, the gospel. Jesus says, I've come that you might be saved. And when you say, Jesus, you're saved. Paul on the Damascus Road, he, he was knocked off his horse and, and he looked up and he said, Lord. And he was killing people, putting them in jail, feeding them the lion, doing all that dumb stuff. What are they doing nowadays? They're killing people. You kill people with your words. Jesus says you're justified by the very words of your mouth. What are you saying about your kid? Well, he's on dope. He's in jail. He's this, he's that. Wrong. I call those things that be not as though they are. I call my kids into righteousness. I call my loved ones out of drugs and dope and sin. I call them out. 
No weapon formed against my family will prosper. I stand on the word of God. The word of God says you're justified by my blood, by my word. My word will stand when everything else was. This earth will be destroyed, but my word will prevail. I will prevail. You will prevail because you are in my hands. Glory to God. So when you listen to all this stuff, they're, all they're doing is tearing down. Satan is the... Pre- I tell you what. Ephesians chapter 2, he says that you were once part of the course of the prince of the air. Who's the prince of the air? Satan? Who's on TV? And all the airwaves going around the world. And all the internet and all the, all the technical stuff. Satan is trying to control that. When you control that, you control the minds of the people. Because a man, as Jesus says, as a man thinks, so is he. So what are you thinking? Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't have enough money to pay my bills. Lord, I, well, count it all joy. Laugh at the devil. Laugh at the bill. Well, you ignoramus, who do you think you are? So we began and to be caught up in that. We are caught up in the things around us. I want to pause just for, for a moment. This is part of part one. So you're caught up in the situation. Do you remember the story about in Daniel where the, the, the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Nebuchadnezzar and, and Satan was working back there then and he got this guy he said these guys are not worshiping you when you made that decree that they had to worship you didn't bow your knee to you being king and he says throw them in, he says heat the furnace up get it hotter than it's ever been throw them in there and so they go down to throw them in the mighty men of Nebuchadnezzar all died out there trying to throw these guys into the fire throws them in there and Nebuchadnezzar walks by and he said, look in there. He said, I thought we threw three guys in there and I see the fourth one in there. That's the Son of God in there. God showed up right in the middle of that fire. And when they come out of the fire, there wasn't even a stench or smell on their clothes. It wasn't even touched. And everybody around there says, oh, wow, look what a God these Hebrew children serve. We serve that same God. We serve that same God. He's big enough to change that young Muslim man's th- thought from that God to the right thought. Who changed you? Who changed me? But if you get caught up in the things around us that the judgment's out there, you're ju- the Bible says in Mark 16, it says those that believe shall be saved, those that don't shall be condemned. So if you don't believe, you're already condemned. Remember the story about Ariam and Mary when they were, they were griping and belly aching about Moses and what he was doing. You know, and he was supposed to be a man called by God and doing things. Moses, he didn't get to enter because he struck the rock twice. A great man of God wrote, the, wrote a, you know, God spoke to him and did a, you ever think he didn't get to go in? He's out there somewhere wherever God put him. But he didn't go in. And you should think, well, if Moses can't get in, how are we going to get in there? We're going to get in there because we're under grace, we're under mercy, we're under forgiveness. And God loves us unconditionally. Do you think he would, that your earthly father doesn't put his arms around you and hold you when you were a, a worthless little piece of flesh you doing all kinds of dumb things and he held you or you hurt yourself and he held you or your mom held you and caressed you and kissed your fingers or whatever you scraped your knee or whatever they they held you our god is greater than that because he doesn't hold anything against you nothing zero when you start thinking like god thinks you'll quit thinking those things about your kids You'll quit thinking bad. I don't care if they're eyeball deep in sin. I don't care if they're drugging or shooting stuff in their arm. Or they're whoring or they're doing all kinds of dumb stuff. I don't care what they're doing. How do you get, how do you get them out of that? Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind that lying devil that's on my kids. I take authority. Matthew 16, 19. I take authority over those things that are troubling my kids. I take authority over the, that spirit that's bothering them. I take authority over drugs. I take authority over sex outside of marriage. I take authority over... Abortion. I take authority over the things that's troubling our president. I take authority over the, the, the main bank of this nation that's putting us in debt and the Congress and the Senate. I take authority over that lying spirit that you can spin your way into pro- prosperity. You cannot do that. The Bible says, oh, no man, nothing except to love him. Our nation is violating the things of God. Founded on the Constitution that everyone is created equal and that we all are on one nation under God. And yet we violate that every day. And yet we won't repent. But if we will repent, all it takes is one of us to say, Lord, forgive us this nation as an intercessor. 
In Isaiah 59, 19, he says, When the enemy comes in like a flood, God comes in like a huge overcoming flood. He overcomes it. And the flood of the Holy Ghost is moving upon the face of this nation to change this nation. He's looking for a handful of people that will say, we're not moving. We're not moved by what we see. We're moved by only the Word of God. We're going to walk. And God will trust us to give us the prayers to pray. So when we pray correctly, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, it says the God of this world has blinded. Now this is written to believers. Blinded the body. The church body. Blinded them. So we're under judgment? No, we're not. We're under grace. We're under mercy. How far does grace and mercy go? How far is eternity? How far is God's love? Forever, 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 forever. To, to you and to those that are near and to those that are far off, Peter Priest in Acts 2.37. We have the grace of God. It is to the fullness of God. We're not under these shortcomings that's happening. Yes, we're in a nation that's not walking with God. But I'm telling you, God is right here. He's right here in this room. He says, if any two will gather together in my name, he says, I'm in the midst of it. I keep wanting to do Geraldine up here. I had, a, I had a, this girl, Brenda, what was her name? She was a black girl and she was from Ohio. She was, and she was a deer. She'd come back from Afghanistan and been in the army. And I said, woman, I said, I'm, I want to be black inside even though I'm white outside. I lay your hands on me. I want to shuck and jive just like you got to. So, mm -mm. So ever since then, I've been shucking and jiving. I'm going, I'm going to get plum ridiculous worshiping my God. I might dance a little bit even. You know, who cares what I'm doing? I might pull my clothes off and run around in my underwear if it'll glorify my God and my Father. I don't care what you think about me. And you may have some, and you're going to receive persecution. Come on, Satan. Take your best shot. If this is God's ministry, he will blow, the, he'll blow Satan right back where he's supposed to be, out of sight and out of mind. I am not tied up with what somebody's thinking about me thinking. I told you I died over there on March 11th. So what can you do to a dead man? You going to hang me on a cross? You going to put me in jail? You can't lock me up. You can't shut me up. Amen? Amen. And I'm not going to back up. God says go lay hands on the sick and he will raise them up. God says pray the prayer of faith and he will save them. God says and we're going to do it. God says we're going to do it. Jesus says if you love me you'll keep my commandments. What is love? To love that guy right there. Love that guy right over. Love that guy right there. Well he may not smell right. Yeah he does. He just got out of the shower. <laughs> See? I want to tell you something else. Don't leave. I got one more word for you. Wherever a trucker goes a CD goes and the Word of God goes and that people are changed by the Word of God. Nothing else will change you. I can't change you. Water won't change you. Nothing can change you. Only the Word of God. Amen? You see there. Amen. Even my brother from India says amen. God loves all His people unconditionally. You, do, you can't whip it up. You can't do it. What does the Word say in Ephesians 2? For by grace are you saved through faith, not of works, lest you say, look who I am. Yeah, well, look who I am. I'm a child of God, and so are you, and I'm washed by the blood. Amen? Thank you, Lord, for that, brother. Call them in. How are you going to get them? Call them in. I asked the Lord to bring them all in this morning. Bring everyone, every color, shape, size, form. I don't care where they are. I don't care who they are. Bring them in. He is doing that. When we are open to what He wants to do, the glory of God will follow. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You better listen to what the Spirit of God is saying because I haven't got this. This is not notes. This is what the Spirit has given me to tell the world. Listen, folks. My glory and my grace and my blood is efficacious and it's ever working. It's ever cleansing. And my word will do exactly what I sent it to do in Isaiah 55, 6 through 10. As the rain comes so, and causes the earth to sprout, so food for the eater and bread, my word will do exactly what I sent it to do. And what does His word say? Everyone who calls upon the name of the my son, who is the word of God, shall be so so Hebrew delivered. And that's us. That's anyone that'll call. What happens if you're in the hospital room right at this minute and you're sick with cancer and the doctor has told you, I'm sorry, my loved one, but you're out of here in a few days. You don't have long to live. You better get everything all done. I have everything done when I said Jesus. Everything's fixed. My will is fixed. My testament is fixed. Because when I step out of this body, buddy, I got a brand new body. And I'm faster than the speed of light. I'm stronger than a locomotive. I can leap tall buildings. I can move mountains. And I'm a rock-busting, devil-kicking, son of the Most High God. Amen? Amen. 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 
And so when we start acting who we really are, then Satan and darkness has to flee from us. The Spirit of the Lord told me, he says, when the light of the glory of the gospel comes into your heart and my heart, it will flow out to you like the great radiance of my Son that is many times bigger than the earth. And that great radiance of God's glory will encompass the whole world. And the people will see and know they've been in the presence of a holy God. And no one and no one can accomplish this or do anything about it except the Father Himself because He created this that it would happen this way. Jesus told about the radiance and the, and the blessings that He wanted to put out. How big is your God? The reason, here's the way you might pray. Lord, your treasury is full of righteousness and full of riches, and I just call those riches into my life so that I can be more than a giver, that my cup is overflowing by the Spirit of God, and whatever you put in my care, I'm going to give it away. You're going to take care of my needs because your word says that my needs are already met. So everything you give me is going to go into whatever your ministry is, Father, whatever it is. We're going to be good stewards of it. We're going to do exactly what you tell us to do. We're not going to waste one nickel of it. We're going to do exactly. We're going to take this gospel to the ends of America, to the ends of the earth. You watch it. And everywhere I go, we're going to call the people in. Everywhere you go, you're going to call the people in because this is not a one-man show. We're all on the same team and we're all part of the body of Christ no matter where you are, who you are, or what you've been through. God says, if you'll listen, I will teach you the ways of my son. And when his son teaches us, we've been made righteous, we've been brought in, we've been washed. And so don't neglect the word. When you want to read the word, read it out loud. Faith comes by hearing. If you have a loved one that's being stubborn and got their boot heels dug in, bind that lying spirit that's keeping them from entering in now. Today is the day, not tomorrow. Get off of that nonsense. I hear those guys stand up there and say, well, the Lord is pouring out a little word. Yeah, he is, and today is the day. Not tomorrow. Even though when we get to tomorrow, it will be tomorrow. Today is the day. When you pray, believe today you got the riches to pay for your car payment. Today you got the new car you wanted or the new truck. Today your wife got healed of cancer or your brother-in-law or your brother. Today you got healed. Today we spoke the name of Jesus. Today our president's life changed. Today is the day. Not tomorrow. Today. Call it in. Why do you wait till tomorrow? Or do you want to stay another night with the frogs as they did over there, Pharaoh did in Moses' day? Well, we'll wait till day after tomorrow, Lord. You, I mean, Moses, you can get rid of the frogs in. You want another night with frogs in your bed? You want another night with sickness in your drawers? You want another night with all the problems? Well, that's the way the world is. We're not of this world. We're calling the things into the world. We're spirit beings in a, in a fleshly world, a carnal world. We're calling those things that the spirit realm in upon the natural world. What we've been doing is we've been calling the natural world into the natural world. So what do we got? Mess, a chaos, wars, rumors of wars, all these things. Uh, we're all fearful of, oh, we're going to have EPA, our, our air, we're going to run out of food. We're gonna... How big do you think God is? Did he not create this and tell man to go multiply and fill and the earth? Did he not? And take authority over everything on the earth? Did he not tell us that in a word? Well, I don't believe God's big enough. I was thinking here this morning, I was listening to people, there was a song playing over there. He, said, he was saying, oh, he said, all these things will happen. All these things will happen. I said, yeah, and everybody's praising the Lord. But they don't believe a doggone word they just said. They'll get up and stand up, oh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And they don't even do what they just said. They'll turn right back to the, to the place where they were. Or they'll turn right back. Well, I guess God didn't hear my prayer. I got news for you, chief. He heard you because he's right in there. When you went in the bathroom to do whatever, don't take a selfie. You might want somebody to cancel it. I did that the other day and I couldn't wait for the AT&T. I didn't want any of y'all to be messing with my phone to see the selfie. You don't want... <laughs> Come on, lighten up, guys. This is fun time. I wouldn't tell you all these things if I didn't want you to laugh a little bit. The Spirit of God says, I want to come into you. I want to lead you in the path of righteousness. The Spirit of God says, come. All that are heavy laden. Take my yoke upon you. I will give you rest. Why are you worrying? Why are you fretting? I was in Fort Worth and I, the phone rang and it was this call and I knew it was false. It says, we're the IRS and we're filing a lawsuit on you. And I said, glory to God. Well, you know they don't call you. They send you a registered letter if they're suing you. 
I mean, you just know. I mean, it was just, you know, somebody jerking around. Most of the things that happen to us, in my opinion, Texas Cowboy Talk, they're jerking around. You watch any news outlet you want to watch. I don't care. Watch any of them. Conservative ones if you want. What do they report? Anything that is sensational. How about the two guys that were broke out of the jail up there in New York and were, were murderers and they were on death sentence and all that? Do you think God doesn't love those two guys and they were jerking around, could have killed more people? But people started praying and they didn't kill anybody. One of those got killed. Now the other one's got to live. I had something happen here this morning, I'll tell you, and you all can laugh too. This is funny. Nearly every Sunday, somebody gets those music CDs up, CDs up there by the tape player. Nearly every Sunday, somebody takes those without asking. I'd give it to them if they wanted it. While I was gone, I came back in, and the money, the donation box was open. And the music was gone. I said, praise the Lord, somebody's going to get blessed today. Now, I could have said, well, that <laughs> I didn't say that. And I'm not going to say it now. Because I cannot stand before you and let an unwholesome word come out of my mouth or a condescending word come out of my mouth that would put you under some kind of trouble. And so I asked the Lord, I said, you took me to Romans 8. And I said, there's no condemnation. He said, now read the next verse. It says, we are set free by the, from the spirit of law of death. How? By the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. By the Holy Spirit, we are set free. The Holy Spirit does the work in us. The Holy Spirit enters us. I believe that we were before we were ever formed in our mother's womb, according to Jeremiah 1, 6, the Lord was in us, forming us, and bringing us to this day. I had a dude call me yesterday, and he said, oh, I'm into this predestination. I said, yeah, everybody's predestinated to know God. Every person is made in God's image. Every person is a spirit being made to know God. Well, the teaching of man has taken and tried to unravel all the things that are written in God's Word. God's Word is substantial. It's inspirational. It will lead you and guide you in every situation. It will not put you under condemnation. It will not harm you or hinder you. It will elevate you and fill you and bless you and motivate you to higher and greater levels of revelation in the knowledge and the wisdom of who God is. And if you're lacking in any doggone area, it's simply because you have not asked. Lord, I would like a brand new F-250 diesel pickup, red one, paid for. Thank you, Jesus. I just call that puppy in. Now, I didn't say y'all were going to give this to me. I called it in out of God's kingdom. Amen? Amen? That's what those guys were doing with those jet aircraft. Now, you can get a knot out of <laughs> not in your stomach or get mad and you can start saying, well, look where we are. Well, these people, look what the Supreme Court... It doesn't matter what the Supreme Court did. Five people are going to tell this nation of Christians how to live. I don't think so. Now, we're not going to break the law. We're not going to. I, I was in a meeting the other day, and I heard a preacher stand up. He says, if somebody's gay comes into my church, I'll kill them. I said, they can come to my church because I'm going to put my arms around them and hug them and hold them and tell them about Jesus. Amen. That's what I'm going to do. And if they're an adulterer, I'm going to put my arms. If they're a murderer, I'm going to hold them. I've shared the gospel with a lot of killers that are on death row. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel, and I'm not afraid to put my hands on somebody that's got something that you don't want your hands on. A fly can't land on a hot stove, as old John Guerin used to say. Nothing can come near your dwelling place. Psalm 91. But if you don't believe that, throw the thing in the trash and quit and walk out and do whatever you want to do. But when you leave here, you're going to be changed. When you leave here, you're going to be full of the Word. Because I'm not going to tell you anything less than what God said. Because the Holy Spirit dwells in this body. I'm telling you, He's turning this world upside down. And you're going to see more. You haven't seen anything yet. Grab your hat, guys. This is this. Well, I'm telling you, the Lord is moving. And he's going to move fast because the times are now. We just read a while ago that in the last days this would happen. In the last days, folks, we're there. It's not tomorrow that this is going to happen. It's not tomorrow that Puerto Rico's broke. They're broke today. It's not tomorrow that America's broke. They're broke today. Well, what's God big enough to do? My God is able to supply America's needs. My God is able to turn America back to himself. Do you think he's not looking for somebody out there in the middle of nowhere? He took one man, Ananias, prayed for old Saul of Tarshish and turned the whole known world around. That guy preached all over the known world and changed the whole world forever. One guy. And he was a nobody from nowhere. And I've heard tell that one vote changed the, how the, the, the Constitution and everything was formed. One vote. God will use one person to change the entire world. And let it be you, let it be me. But he will do it. He's looking for somebody. 
It don't matter who you are. It don't matter where you were born. No matter the circumstance. Forget the past, guys. Forget it. Doesn't matter where you've been. I don't care who you are. You know, I would love to go back to ranching, but I'm not going to get to. Why? Because God's got me on a pathway to tear this thing wide open. It's not going to. It's not going to change. It's going to get. It's going to get terrific. And you got to pray. This is the time to pray and help. This is the time to grab your hat, to saddle up, get your Bible, get your whatever you got to do, and be ready to pray 24/7. Because I'm telling you, this thing is happening, and it's happening all around you. And it doesn't matter about the church. It doesn't matter about the people in the church. God, those people are outside that church most of the time. Where are you outside the church? Where's Jesus? Outside the wall of Jerusalem. He was outside. He was crucified outside. Where's the gospel? Outside. Where the people are? Outside. The people come outside. The, the gospel is going to go to them. Every person in need, God will put somebody right in their pathway. I don't have to go preach in a church. I don't need that. God will take me, he'll take me right into those homes by the Holy Ghost. It says the Spirit of God is everywhere. He's going to take you right out there. You're going to be standing in line somewhere. And somebody will be just like this morning. A guy come over there and he says, my nephew died down there and, a, and a blood was running out of his mouth. Boy, I just grabbed that guy and I said, in the name of Jesus, God take this death and make something good out of it. So we had church right there. Just me and one guy. God was had me there for just for that one guy. Now if I'd have been somewhere sitting in a pew, that wouldn't have happened, would it? So you got to go where the people are. And you've got to be inspired that whenever you go, everywhere you go, who's riding in there with you? Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. We praise Him. We praise Him. One of the most interesting Bible verses, and I just, I love this. It's the 15th chapter, 13th chapter of, of Hebrews. It says, let us continually, let the fruit of our lips continually offer up thanksgiving. That means continually. That means, I mean, you're, so you'll be rocking along. <laughs> Hallelujah, praise the Lord. You're walking along. You know, and something happens, you say, oh, thank you, Jesus. And you just, you just dumped your whole plate in the floor and you say, oh, I paid $20 for that food. Dumped it in the floor. Thank you, Jesus. Or somebody just running in my car. Thank you, Jesus. Or I got a nasty letter. Thank you, Jesus. Count it all joy. When you do that, Satan got no place in you. Well, if you go around, oh me, oh every money, oh I mean friends, I don't. Wrong. I got three friends: God the Father, Jesus the Son, the Holy Ghost, and all of y'all. Well, what happens if I do something stupid? You're gonna love me in spite of me, because I'm probably gonna do something stupid, and you are too. But that's the way we're made. God says, I'm gonna take whatever you're doing, I'm gonna make something good out of it. So when you see all these difficult times in these last days, we ought to be praising God and walking in the glory that God set for us and walking in the power because we have the power to change what they are doing. We have the power. Well, you can't lead that old horse to water and make him drink. Yes, you can. Now, I'm a rancher and I've had horses and cattle and I tell you, We'd get cattle from the southeast and they wouldn't drink at a water tank because they'd never drank from a water tank. Some of you are sitting out there looking at me right now and you're not wanting to get up to the water tank because you're used to having your feet in the water. You've got to have the, hear the water trickling over down a stream maybe. Or you've got to hear something different than you've heard. But I'm telling you the water is the word. The Spirit of God is the word. And it's moving and it's around you. And put your foot in the water. The moment you do, the Holy Spirit's going to take a hold of you and He's going to shake you like you've never been shaken. He's going to wash you. He's going to cleanse you and He's going to change your whole attitude. And your body is going to be healed. Whatever's troubling your body or hindering your body, He's going to clean it up and make it whole. I don't care what it is. If you need a body part, He will put a body part in you. You don't even have to have a body part. I met a woman one time that didn't have a womb. She wanted children. And I said, lady, I'm going to lay my hands on you and you think you can get pregnant. And this was underneath those big hospitals up there. And she's pushing my wife in a wheelchair. And I said, you get and get pregnant. She sent me pictures. She had twins, the first pop. She had another one right in behind those nine months later. Her husband was something else now. And he'd been waiting on his Joe Mama to be ready to have babies. And she did. And she has. And so you can just say, well, I don't believe. What? Believe it or not, that's whatever you want to believe. That's fine with me. 
I've seen the Lord raise 28 people from the dead. And he told me one time, he said, you're going to see double that many. And I said, Lord, I'm an old man. He said, I might drive you up on an airplane crash or a train wreck or, or bus wreck. And he said, there might be 100 people or 500 people there. And, and I'm going to put the faith in you to raise those people up. Why are you amazed at that? How big is God? The Word says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Does it not say that? What do we need? We got Him. When we got Jesus, we got the whole universe. There's nothing held out from us. There's no mysteries we don't know. There's nothing God's... He'll tell us. He'll tell us exactly. He'll show us. Sometimes He sent two boats and a helicopter to get somebody and they rejected that. Some of you are sitting there on the outside. Well, I don't believe this guy. I don't give a hoot whether you believe me or not. God says if you, if you believe the Word, you'll believe me and those who sent me. He says if they, they don't like you... Cast the dust off your feet and go to the next one. I have bunches of people over there this morning came out. I don't want that CD. Fine. No means no. All you're doing is rejecting the Lord because that's all about Jesus. I'm just the guy standing there. Interesting. I love old Paco. That's my kid. This kid, I'm telling you, he's a blessing. He is. I'm telling you, this guy can sing like... If I could just walk around in his presence half the time, I would be so enlightened. Thank you, Paco. I love you, man. God is doing something. You know what is exciting me? Not the miracles, not the signs, because the Lord says my word will be followed with that. But the love of God in my heart for people, Romans 5.5 5, and, and Matthew 9.11 says, and the compassion. You know, I have desired this for years. But it's like this, the Lord just took the, the lid off of me and it's just, I mean, it's exploding out of me. I'm finding myself hugging people that I have. There is no reason under God's creation why I would want to hug or squeeze them, as Terry said. I just, but the Lord says, mm. give them a big old good squeeze. You know, I was at, I stopped in McDonald's yesterday morning to get me a, a cup of coffee. And there was an old, old guy, I've known him for a long time. I'll say his name, Bill, but I won't tell you the rest of it. But anyhow, I, one time his wife had uh, bre lumps in her breast. And this was in a church full of deacons. And we were in an exercise room, and she came in, and she slammed a chair right in the middle of the room. And she said, Jerry Bond, put your hands on me. I've got knots in my breast. Now, the room was full of deacons, but their faith wasn't up there. She grabbed this old guy up and told her to lay him. They didn't do any surgery. Those tumors dissolved. Well, I, this man was her husband. <laughs> and well, I was told, telling him the story about this woman's complexion change. He said, now you always got to give God the glory. You know, L.O. religion. I said, if you ever catch me not doing that, I said, the Lord will take me home. And his wife grabbed my hand because she knew that her husband just opened his mouth and injected his foot. Satan will do anything with anyone to try to shut you down. We take no offense for the gospel's sake. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you do. God is going to make me bulletproof and half. Amen. Pauline, wake up, girl. Amen. When you're, when you're walking with God, go back through history, go back through the Bible, and look at every person that ever walked with God. Somebody always attacked them. You're going to be attacked. Persecution, it's called. Paul said in some of his writings in Timothy, he said, I survived it all. And he was chased around by those Thessalonica Jews. That was the thorn in the flesh. They followed him. They tormented him. They stoned him to death. They beat him up. They did everything. Throwed him in jail. And he came out of there praising God. He was in jail. He was praising God. Wherever he was, he was praising God. And what did he have to be hopeful about? What in the world, if any, let's just stop and talk about this. What is any of us today got to be hopeful about? What is any of us? When you look at everything that's temporal, it's but for a moment. But the spiritual side of things is eternal forever and ever and ever and ever. And there's no end to God's grace, God's mercy, and God's love. This guy right here is in his 80s. Doesn't mean a thing in the world. He's just a pup considered to God. Thousands and thousands and who knows how. No beginning, no end. He's going to be with the Father forever. 
No matter about his earthly age, that's just but a moment, a blink in time. Well, you say, well, why does a little baby or someone die? It doesn't matter. That's God's timing. Why do you have to understand everything? Well, you're like me. You've got an inquisitive mind. There used to be an old guy in my childhood called Jack Mars. Jack Mars, all he could do is ask questions. That's me. I've got a spirit. Father, what are you doing today? I want to go do it. Are you going fishing? I want to go. Are you raising somebody from dead? I want to go. What are you doing? Are you doing a miracle today? Are you changing somebody? I want to go. Instead of saying, well, I wonder what i got to do today. I ain't got anything to do today. Maybe I'll wash my car. Maybe I'll mow the grass. Or maybe I'll get in my truck. Or maybe I'll polish my chrome. Maybe I'll do something. Duh. God, what are you, what are you doing today? It, it, there's nothing wrong with stuff. And there's nothing wrong with taking care of stuff. But God wants you and I to walk in Him, with Him, all the time. And the reason we're lacking is because we choose not to do that. Close with this one verse, Romans 8, 11. As God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of Him, raised Him up, resurrected His body, He will so raise you and I up. If you go to Ephesians, he said, I have raised you up and I have seated you in heavenly places. And that's now. Not tomorrow. Now. Now. Now you've been seated. If you bog around down here in the earth and in carnal things, you're carnal. Christian or not Christian. Always remember, God loved everybody. How would you have got saved if He hadn't loved you? How would you have gotten saved if you hadn't prayed the prayer of faith? Jesus says in John 14, 6, I'm the way, I'm the truth. No one comes to the Father God except through me. Close your eyes, please. Put your hand on one of your hands on your chest. Father, we stand naked and bare before you. You know our hearts. You know our thoughts. You know where we've been. You know what kind of horse we're riding. You know what everything about us. You made us. You brought us this far. And Lord, your word says that whoever will confess that Jesus, your son, was hung on that cross, suffered and bled and died, and they buried him. And three days later, he rose miraculously, resurrection from that grave, and led captivity captive. And you brought him out. And then you filled him 50 days later with the Holy Ghost. And you fill us, Luke eleven thirteen. 13. How much more will you, Father, give us the Holy Spirit? Give us yourself. You are the Spirit of truth. And we praise you. We thank you. We walk in the mercy. Father, we pray for our nation that they will repent, they will turn back. We pray for godly leaders, godly judges, godly senators, congressmen, all the way through every office in the land that godly men and women would be raised up. We pray for the lost, Father, that laborers of the harvest would cross their pathway. We bind the spirit of blindness that's on them. We bind the spirit of religion that's keeping some people out of the kingdom. We bind that. We pray for Lori, Father. She has a lung infection. We thank you, Father, that we curse that lung infection and we call for every fiber in those lungs just to take on new, new, new being and to force that oxygen and blood right out to the extremities of that person. We thank you for PTL, Father. Uh, there's a, Frida is healed. That's a praise of the Lord. I thought it was PTL, something special, but there is. You are. We just praise the Lord that this woman was healed. And Father, we thank you that this woman... She was delivered from drugs and that she will not do this around her baby. And we give you praise that this lady prayed with her. Father, for Josiah, we thank you, Father, that that, that celebration of life in that family where that loved one came to glory to be with you, Father. Let them see and know that you'll comfort them in every area if they'll just realize that your hand was in that. It wasn't a passing. It was a raising up. And they got a body of immortality, Father. Oh, we thank you, Father, for the word of encouragement for Joanna. We thank you, Lord, that woman is set free. We curse everything that's hindering her. She's going to change, and she's going to do it right in front of her folks' face. Right now, in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for the TV ministry, for the CD ministry, for everything that we're doing to get the word out. Everything, Father, every person around us, we ask your blessing. Multiply unto them all the blessings, more than they can, so much that they have, have to give it away. They haven't got a place to store it. It'll just run over. If they hear it on TV, they're going to do it. If they hear it on, on, the, on the, the viral stuff on Facebook or, or Google or wherever, Father, it'll just go viral. And people will see this and they'll hear that you are our God and you want to do these things in people's life. Change them, bless them, and let the spirit of dis discouragement and all the junk that the news media is putting out under the inspiration of the, anti the Holy Ghost, Father. We just don't want that. that anti not the Holy Ghost, but the Antichrist, Father. And we thank you, Lord, that the Holy Spirit is working across all those people's hearts. 
and changing it and giving us life in Jesus' name. Thank you for the offerings, Father. Thank you for all the checks in the mail. Thank you for all this that will meet every need and pay for TV time. Whatever you want to do, Father, it's your ministry. You do it however you want. We just give you praise. And we just say thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. <laughs>
rose from that transgression resulting in con condemnation. But on the other hand, the free gift across many transgressions resulting in justification. For if by the transgressions of one, death reigned through the one, much more than we've received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness which reigns in life through one, Jesus Christ. So then as though one transgression which resulted in condemnation to all men, even so though one act of righteousness thus resulted in justification of all life to all men. For as though many through one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, even so through the obedience of the one that many will be made righteous. And the law came that through the transgression might increase, that where sin abounded, grace will abound more, and that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ. I got news for you. No matter what's happening on this earth, no matter what Satan is doing, no matter what the people are doing, God's righteousness and the blood of Jesus will cleanse all who call upon that name. Because today is the day of salvation. Today, if you hear his voice, enter into the kingdom. Today, if you're sick in your body, say in the name of Jesus and by the power of that name, I curse you and I cast you out of my body. If you preach the word of the Lord and you preach it anything other than the truth, you are cursed, according to 1 Corinthians 12:3. Jesus is Lord, and you will speak it either by the Holy Spirit or by the, by the seat of your pants. You're going to confess that Jesus is Lord because the Word of God says, quote, All and every knee shall bow. Everything on earth in heaven and under the earth shall bow to that name. So we stand amazed at the grace that was brought, the, the, the unmerited favor, because while we were yet sinners, it says in the 6th chapter of Romans, Christ died for us, that we were washed and changed and made new, a new creation. We've been born again into a new revelation, into the Spirit of the living God. So when you watch and you listen by your spirit, you understand that God did a great and mighty work. And it was prophesied in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 where, that there would great, be a great apostasy, so even in Jesus' day, when he went back to his own hometown in Mark chapter 5, you're going to see that he could do no mighty miracles because of doubt and unbelief. But I got news for you, and I got news for the world. God is in control, and everything that is happening is going to work together for good because God has called the people to repent, to turn from, and to receive the righteousness of justification through the Spirit in us. So we've been bought with a price. The price was Christ upon the cross. And through that shedding of that miraculous blood, we have been washed through the regeneration of the Word and changed into the very image of the loving God. Wow, I hope somebody in here says amen because this is wonderful what the Spirit of God is giving because He gives it under the inspiration and the aspiration of who Christ is in us, the hope of glory, the presence of the Lord. I must tell you about a miracle that I saw. I was walking. I had come out of the Colosseum on Wednesday about a quarter of noon and I had prayed and asked the Lord to give us a meeting place over in Pampa so that people could come and lay hands and preach the gospel. And in 15 or 20 or 30 minutes, I was outside. I received a call from a woman. She says, I own businesses on Main Street. I'm opening my businesses up for the gospel to be preached. And they're free and it'll be so the whole city can come. And we've been praying for 30 or 40 years that, that God would raise up somebody that would come and preach the gospel and this city would turn back to righteousness. So that prayer was answered within 20 or 30 minutes. I walk a little farther and I'm going down through this park where these waterfalls are. There were six ladies that accosted me and stopped me and said, Don't you remember us? We're from Canada. And I said, No, I thought y'all were from Australia. Of course, I never met a, a stranger, so I have to talk to everybody. So I prayed for all six of these women. So what is amazing, there was one standing there. And you know how girls like to look good, you know, and us guys like to look at them that look good. So we say, Oh, wow. And so she had a very bad complexion and she looked terrible and, her, and very self-conscious this and she was dressed very, very nice and beautiful shoes and beautiful blonde hair and she was probably about 40 years old but her complexion was pure nothing. It was bad and, and, I'm, and I don't know, you know sometimes it's, a, it's your first nature or your second nature but the, the Spirit of God just, I just put my hand on this woman's chest and said you will never look in the mirror like you're looking today. You will have perfect skin and your complexion will be absolutely beautiful. Turn back to talk to the first lady that I was talking to, and she goes like this. Right in front of our very eyes, this woman's complexion changed. Not a, not a, nothing. I mean, perfect. Beautiful, perfect. And then pandemonium broke out because everybody started praising the Lord. And I mean, it was a revelation. I mean, the Lord showed up. 
instantly. It wasn't, you know, I... I heard, I heard this, one of the speakers says, you've always got to ask God for something. I didn't even think about asking God. I wasn't even thinking. I, my mind was totally gone. I wasn't thinking anything. I was blank. God did what he wanted to do. Just, I mean, I can't express it. I, I didn't do anything. I mean, it was, it was not me doing it. I'm telling you, it was God doing it. It was him. This lady called, she says, are you the one? I said, no, Jesus is the one. Jesus is the one. Jesus is the baptizer of the Holy Ghost. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the redeemer. By his blood, by, his, by him we are who we are. We've been justified. We've been redeemed. We've been made righteous. Not by our righteousness, but our filthy rags. But he has made us right. He's made us worthy. And his blood cleanses us, constantly cleansing us. And our thoughts are washed by the blood of the Lamb. Changed in a moment, in a twinkling of eye, we've been redeemed. You know, I had another thing happen to me. It was kind of crazy. I was down there and I got a call in the middle of the night. Y'all remember Walter that came that was healed of esophagus cancer and uh, cancer in his lung and under his arm. And his girlfriend, you remember there was a, a, a fr friction and unhappiness in, her, in his family. You know, he said, we're not living together. She's just my girlfriend. Anyhow, she called me. She said, my, my dear friend, would you pray for her on the phone? And her name was Brenda. And I said, yes. So they had her call me and I prayed for her. Well, I didn't know they were putting her in hospice, and y'all know what hospice is. Your life is very short. And she knew Jesus, and she was ready to meet the Lord, and she was excited and all this. And two or three days later, she passed away. Well, she called me, and she says, I can't find a pastor. There's no money to pay anybody to do this funeral service. Would you mind coming to Canyon, Texas and doing this? I said, absolutely. In a heartbeat, I'll do it. Freely give, freely receive. Our God is able to take care of business. He will always have somebody cross your pathway. When you need help, he will put somebody in your pathway. So I go down there, and I figured there was five or six people would show up. It was a packed house, a packed house full of people. Thank you for listening to the messages. And we, we just praise the Lord that you have believed and received. You know, the Bible says in Romans 10, verse 8, Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord and repents of their sins, that he is just and merciful to forgive you, that Jesus was beaten, he hung on the cross, he was buried, and on the third day he came out of that tomb, and he gave mankind re redemption and right re rest restoration back to the Father. We thank him right now that he's blessed you and restored you. I pray that you prayed that, that prayer of faith. If you did, call us on that number there on the bottom of the screen or email us, or write us, whatever you'd like. We will, we will be glad to hear from you. May, your, may you send your tithes and offerings to help us get, get this message out throughout the world. We hope you're having a blessed and a prosperous day. In Jesus Christ, amen.